Good afternoon. Excellent. I always get the tough slots. I get the before coffee slot, so people are anxious for coffee or a cigarette, or I get the after lunch slot when everyone's just had too much carbs and they're feeling a little bit uh, slumberish. All right. So my name is Brendan. I work for Red Hat. Uh, I'm what you call probably the partner manager for, for simplicity terms. So I work across the region, and I'm going to jump into that in a second, working with our partners, upskilling our partners, and working with a large number of our customers across Africa. So as I said earlier, the expectation for today is this is a, a non-technical session, but this is an information sharing session around Red Hat and some of the things that we feel are very important, which is the skill on the continent to deliver the solutions, right? There's great technology, there's great uh, products out there, there are great community products out there, but if you don't have the right skill, very high chance your projects will fail and your ongoing support and your initiatives will fail. So skill to us is one of the most critical things. I'd like to jump in by sharing a little bit about how Red Hat has transitioned over the last few years. And I do like to walk around, so guys on the camera, you might have to follow me. Um, so over the last four years, Red Hat has made a huge investment into the African continent. Four years ago, we were four associates, we call our employees associates, working from coffee shops with free Wi-Fi around Johannesburg area. Fast forward four years, and we have an office of 25 associates, still looking for four more people, all in technical roles, uh, and an associate in Cape Town. So we made the investment at the beginning of the year for a Cape Town office as well. We look after sub-Saharan Africa as a region. So everything across from Ghana up to the left, across to Ethiopia and down, is the market segment that we take our solutions to customers. And we do that in conjunction with a vast number of channel partners, solution provider partners, technical alliance partners, and OEM partners as well. And very important to that is training partners, because the, obviously, as I said, the product is great, but you need the skill out in the field to deliver on these solutions. Now, why am I qualified to talk about training, although I'm not the training manager, is that I engage every single day with partners, over 200 reseller companies, and close to eight to 900 customers, it fluctuates, eight to 900 individual companies per year. And one of the things I hear every single day is training. Where can I get skill? Where can I find skill? How can I build skill? Uh, we know that this is not an easy market. It's a really challenging place to operate. It's a really challenging place to work. So if we can build skill across the continent with these challenges, I'm sure we can build the skill within your businesses and help you get to that next level. Okay? So it's very clear. The need for open source talent is here. We are at the precipice of open source adoption, uh, community project explosion, adoption within small businesses, medium businesses, and large enterprises. It's clear that... Um, the adoption and the usage is exceeding the skill and the capacity in the market. As I said, I get asked this question every single day. How do we build, oh sorry, where do we find skill? Who can I recruit? Do you know anyone who is in the market, their CV is available, looking to make a move? And the short answer, Mr. Customer, is you're not going to hire or poach to fill the talent gap, the skill gap. It's something we need to build together. It's not something you can recruit to fix. It is going to take a long-term view, and it is going to take investment, both in terms of people, resources in terms of time, and then some money, obviously, to do the training and pay for this. So in my hands, I have probably one of the documents you need to read. It's the 2018 Open Source Jobs Report from the Linux Foundation. And this confirms what we're seeing every single day out in the field, that there's this huge skills gap, right? If within this report, some of the specs and some of the, the stats that come out is that 87% of hiring managers are firing it difficult. When I mean difficult, I mean they cannot find open source talent. They cannot find open source skill. Within that, the subcategories that customers are looking to hire or train the most are developers, DevOps engineers, sysadmins. 
And within this report is a real indictment on us as an industry, which says that one of the biggest challenges in terms of fixing the problem is getting access to information, getting access to the right courses, finding out where to go and upskill. So we're not going to solve this if we don't know where to start. And a lot of today is pointing you in the right direction of where to find the information and what to do to upskill yourselves. Another step coming out of a report that we use quite often is that within your businesses, your management team are likely talking about digital transformation. Personally, it's a term that I think has perhaps been misconstrued or overused, and I try not to use it. But in a management level, digital transformation, how does that get achieved? If you translate it to a technical level, digital transformation is skills transformation. It's taking the existing skills in your business, upskilling them to be applicable for this new world that we're trying to build for. And 62% of the management that we engage with are saying that they cannot find the skill to help them do this. So what are we going to do next? Okay, I'm going to take you on a journey of where to find information, where to upskill yourselves. And I'm going to break that down into four areas. And it's broken down into how we as humans learn, right? So we learn in a couple of ways. If you need to know something, one of the first things you generally do is you go and you look for information. You Google it. And you go and you look for some information. Albert Einstein famously said, you don't need to remember anything that you can look up. And that's pretty much what information is, right? We need to solve a problem. We go and we look up the info and we forget it. Once you do that often enough on the same thing, you start to build up a body of knowledge. And knowledge is retained learnings, retained information. Once you apply that body of knowledge to your work, to your job, to do something, it could be to do a skill, uh, sorry, to do a task, or to deploy something, or to administer something, if you do that enough, and Malcolm Gladwell in his book famously said, 10,000 10, hours of anything done consistently will build a skill for you and make you an expert. So when we consistently apply that knowledge and we practice it, we build a skill. And at some point in your career, or some point, the business comes to you and says, we need proof that you have the skill. Or well, you want to earn some more money, so you want to get some paper certifications to back up your knowledge, you go and you do some certification. So we're going to step through those four phases now, and I'm going to show you where the Red Hat information lies. How to find information, where to get knowledge, a body of knowledge that you can use consistently, how to turn that into a skill, and then we're going to end up with how do you get yourself certified and what's the value of the certification. Right. So let me take a step back. If I had to ask you to go and look for Red Hat information today on something specific, what would you do? Google. And you'd probably go to which website? Ah. What? OK, you've got me there, right? <laughs> A lot of people actually just go to redhat.com, right? And I want to talk about that for a second, because that's not necessarily the best information. You're talking about technical skill, right? You're talking about detailed stuff. Every single one of Red Hat's products has a product page. And this is the information. This is starting with the small baby steps, and we're going to build up to the, the higher level of information. This is an example of ansible.com. One of our most popular products, this is the dedicated page for Ansible. And at the top, you'll see a resources button, right? These resources are fully available to everyone. The amount of information in here far exceeds what's available on redhat.com. We get this, I get this consistently every single day. I can't find the information I'm looking for on redhat.com forward slash Ansible. It's because you're looking in the wrong place. You have to go to the product page that contains the detailed information. Let me step you through another example here, Reddit OpenShift. Uh, I'm not promoting the product, right? We, if you have preferred community versions, I just want to show you some of the detailed information that is available at the top. So obviously ebooks and webinars, these are pre-recorded webinars, and we do weekly webinars as well. Beginner, intermediate, and advanced information webinars that you can go to. You can uh, register to attend these webinars. If you miss them, 
you can go and pull them down on demand. So it's a full amount of information there. Data sheets and white papers. So the data sheets, data sheets to help you technically architect, build, support your environment if you were choosing a Red Hat product. The white papers are more aimed at the business people. So if you're building a business case, if you're talking about integration, support with other products, the white papers are there to help your managers make those decisions and build the business case for their business. All right. Reference architectures. So this is key, right? This is key, absolutely key. If you're looking for supported reference architectures with multiple other products, both hardware or platform products, plus uh, higher up reference architectures in terms of application deployment, you need to be using these to make sure that what you're doing is absolutely correct and supported. Now, I haven't touched on videos, but you noticed when I started this, there were data sheets, white papers, videos. The best place for video learning is actually YouTube, All right? There's a Red Hat channel on YouTube, which has last count, I think, was just under 4,000 videos. Everything from product overviews, snapshots of conferences like this, through to detailed technical information, how to help you, how to architect, how to deploy, how to troubleshoot problems. You can subscribe to the channel. I think there's 32,000 odd people subscribed to this channel at the moment. And this is the go-to place if you enjoy video learning at no cost. Right? You need to do some searching, of course, but with a clever audience like you, I'm sure you won't struggle to find what you're looking for quite quickly. Okay. All right, so we've looked at information, right? How do you find information? How do you keep going deeper and deeper and building up that body of knowledge? How do you apply this so that you develop skill? And now what we're going to do is start talking about certification. How does certifying yourself, assessing and certifying yourself personally impact you, help you accredit yourself, help you certify yourself, and help you potentially uh, increase your marketability to your company. So who uses edX or Coursera? Okay. A year ago, we announced a partnership with edX. Now, edX, is, edX and Coursera are MOOCs, Mass Open Online Courses. Uh, the edX one is the JV between Harvard University and Yale University. Thousands of courses on the internet that you can go and attend. Everything from you know, how do you change your alternator in your engine right through to software, uh, security hardening, cloud computing, cloud networking, etc. So we partnered with edX a year ago as Red Hat to bring some courses to the, uh, to the internet at no cost. And the first one was the fundamentals of RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This is an eight-week course, completely free, on edX. If you want a verified certificate, there is a cost involved to pay for that, which is $99, so 1,400 to 1,500 Rand. But if you've built up knowledge, if you've, you, you know, you've got a lot of community knowledge, you've been playing with RHEL, you think that you would like to start certifying yourself, uh, or you'd like to verify the skill that you already have. This is a good starting point, okay? Very cost-effective starting point. Eight weeks, $99 if you want the certificate. The South African link to this is that this was done by and recorded, it's all pre-recorded by Ricardo da Costa, who's a South African instructor. He's well-known in the local industry. So we have a little bit of a South African claim to fame here. The other course that we worked with edX to take to market is the fundamentals of containers, Kubernetes, and Red Hat OpenShift, which is our container platform product. This is a six-week course, exactly the same. You can do the training, you can do the course online at no cost. If you'd like to write the verified certificate, it's $99. But it's a really cost-effective, quick and easy way to get some certification behind you. Now, I'm going to talk about the two types of certifications or assessed learnings that Red Hat have. Red Hat has two things. The so first is called an accreditation. And you'll see the logo on the left talks about being a Red Hat accredited individual. And then Red Hat has technical certifications. And we'll talk through that 
in a minute. Now, people often get confused by this. And I don't know your organization that you work for. I don't know your role. I don't know if you're working for an end user or you're working for a reseller or system integrator company. I'm not aware of that. But I'd like to just take a moment and clear up the confusion between the two. Accreditations are for Red Hat partners. We call them solution providers. These are partners that build Red Hat solutions for our customers, take them to market across that very difficult geography called Sub-Saharan Africa that we trade in, integrate, install, integrate, and continue with the support of these environments. Okay? And accreditation is done through something called the Red Hat Partner Portal, which I'm going to jump into in the very next slide. Certification is technical certification to prove your skill. Red Hat Certified System Administrator, Red Hat Certified Engineer, Red Hat Certified Architect. Accreditations are done only via Red Hat Partners through what we call OPEN, the Red Hat Online Partner Enablement Network. So if you're a partner, you can go to the Red Hat Partner Portal, you can click on the Learn button, which will navigate you through to this, where all our products are broken down into three personas of training. And when I talk about a persona, I'm talking about role-based learning. So if you are, and I'm guessing there's no sales people in this room, you would do the sales track, all right? Sales engineer is solution architecture. So if you're architecting Red Hat solutions, this is the track you're going on to learn. All the training is broken down into three what we call specializations either data center, enterprise middleware, or cloud computing. So let's say you want to do Ansible as an example. You want to skill yourself up in Ansible and you're a solution architect. You would choose cloud automation within the cloud specialization because the product that backs that up is Ansible, and you would make sure that you complete the sales engineer accreditation, and you get your accreditation, which is valid for two years. If you're deploying these solutions, you would do the delivery accreditation. Now what makes Red Hat training unique is that in the delivery accreditation, it's all labs based. So RHEL, as an example, I think is 50 hours of lab based work that you need to complete and ex exams that you need to write to get your accreditation. But it's completely free. There's no cost for this if you're a Red Hat partner. Okay? So just think of that. Some of them Go up to 100 hours, 80, 100 hours. That's three weeks' worth of training that you can consume as you want at no cost to get yourself either solution, architect solution architecture accredited or delivery accredited. Okay. Certification is available to everyone. End user, student, customer, partner, it's available to everyone. And Red Hat certifications are known as some of the toughest certifications in the market. Absolutely. I'll give you an example when we get to the Red Hat Certified Architect uh, level, the number of architects that we have in the country, and you'll get a good idea of the seriousness and the challenge that these, uh, these trainings offer. So, how do we start looking at technical certification? Well, I think the first way to start is for you to Assess yourself and figure out what's the best way that you learn. Do you learn best in a classroom environment with your peers, with the ability to ask a certified instructor questions, or do you learn best self-study online at your own pace, at your own capacity? Because if you're learning, if you're aiming to achieve a certification in a learning method that doesn't suit you as a personality, you're going to struggle. This is already hard you're going to struggle. So what we need to do is figure out where you learn. And I'm actually going to come back to that slide. So all Red Hat training, certified training, is available in multiple go-to markets, multiple avenues. The first would be classroom-based. And this is where you go to a certified training facility. The second would be on-site training, where if you can get six people in a room, we'll bring the trainer to you. Obviously, there's some equipment that needs to be configured. Your laptops need to have certain spec. You need to have certain Wi-Fi, et cetera. But we can deliver on-site training for you. And then we have virtual training. So virtual training is uh, virtual training and online training are online, 
The difference between the two is the one is a pre-scheduled course where you would attend and the instructor would be live, but you would be viewing the instructor remotely. And online training is recorded training that you can uh, attend. Um, and then the last one, which is quite interesting, is called a Red Hat Learning Subscription. And we're going to jump into that in a minute. Now, back to the certifications themselves. Uh, Red Hat's made a huge investment in the local market a year ago, almost exactly 14 months ago, where we needed to make some decisions on how do we improve delivery to you as a customer. And one of the things we did is we reduced the number of training partners that we had in the market. So we went to tender, we looked at capacity, we looked at uh, the trainer skills, we looked at the, the uh, tenure that the trainers had had, and we elected to partner with one company to deliver this training. The de facto starting point for all the certification is a Red Hat Certified System Administrator. All right? If you're a basic Linux admin, you want to test your skill. And when I say basic, I'm not disrespecting the certification. This is one of the hardest certifications that we have out there. RHCSA is the starting point for your journey. An RHCE, a Red Hat Certified Engineer, is where you're aiming to be, right? That is the standard that we'd like most of the Red Hat engineers to have in South Africa. And the step above that is a Red Hat Certified Architect. All right, so let me give you an idea of how hard these courses are and the scarcity of skill in Africa. So we have about call it about 120 to 130 RHCSAs on the continent today. On the continent today. RHCEs, it fluctuates, right? Because they're valid for three years and you need to renew your skill continuously. But at last count, we had roughly about 60 RHCEs on the continent. Now, we want to up those numbers. We want more skill. We want to help you drive your projects to completion. The Rolls-Royce of certifications, a Red Hat Certified Architect. Anyone want to take a guess? And we're losing skill, right? We're losing skill off the continent. People are taking opportunities off the continent. So anyone want to take a guess how many RHCAs there are? Very close, sir. Let me benchmark this to Cisco. We know that at any given point in time, Cisco has about 120 uh, CCIEs in South Africa, okay, roughly. Red Hat Certified Architects that we know of that are on the continent, and when I say we know of, they've passed the exam and they've agreed to share their information with us, 15. 15. These guys write their own paychecks. Highly sought after, highly in demand certified engineers. So we've invested significantly with our designated training partner to up the, the volume and the access to RHCSA, the same with RHCE, and definitely the same. We're incentivizing. In fact, sometimes we would even assist with payment to get to Red Hat Certified Architect. Give an example. I have a partner that is, has an individual that's one exam away from a Red Hat Certified Architect. We're going to challenge them to achieve that, uh, that certification and potentially help them fund that if the individual achieves it. So it's key for us. We've also made available um, certifications through our middleware product stack and our cloud product stack that wasn't available 18 months ago in South Africa. All right, so how do you get started to find the right place to train? The first thing you need to do is go to redhat.com forward slash training. That'll redirect you to the right URL, but that'll give you a good starting point on how to find information around certification, either via your job role, the curriculum path that you can choose, which is the product, free courses, yes, there are free certified courses on the internet available, and then the most popular. If you click on that, what you'll get, and these are the courses available for access in South Africa, over 90 courses, Red Hat courses that you can access in South Africa. What they do is they list the ways to train on the right-hand side. 
So they will show you whether that course is available as a classroom course, as an online course, as a virtual instructor course, or via a learning subscription, which is probably one of the smartest ways to consume Red Hat training and certification. So let's dive into a learning sub. We have two versions of a learning subscription, which is similar to a normal product subscription. What a learning sub does is it gives you, as an individual, not as a company, as gives you access as an individual to all our courses online, plus multiple exams and retakes should you fail your exams, because we've already established that this is quite a tough exam, right? So, as an example, standard would give you access to the courses, but this is if you learn well online. Give you access to the courses at your own pace, at your own time, would give you exams, exam vouchers that you can use to write exams, and give you a number of retakes. Now, if I remember correctly, it's five exams and three retakes. Don't hold me to that, that number, but you can find more information about this on the internet. This is a great way to learn. A lot of our enterprise customers are buying 20 to 30 of these, putting their uh, system admins in a room, and forcing them to consume the content, and then it's up to the guys to restudy, self-study, prep for the exam, and write the exam. But it's a super cost-effective way to learn. Okay. If you learn better in a classroom environment, and this goes to you as a person, as a personality, if you learn better in a classroom environment, our training provider of choice that we've partnered with is Talk IT. Now, when we did the tender, and Talk IT were awarded with the business, there was a huge number of requirements they needed to do to step up to, to be able to deliver at the level that Red Hat demands of them. What we've actually done is we've changed the, nation, the, the nature of the program. This is Red Hat training merely delivered by Talk IT. It's not Talk IT being a reseller of Red Hat training. It's a very important point because it goes to the quality of the training and the quality of the instructors. So I'm going to quickly run you through how the last 12 to 14 months of classroom-based learning and investment that Red Hat has made with Talk IT has actually panned out. So Talk IT has been voted through the Meta region, which is Middle East, Turkey, and Africa, the best training provider for the last five years. This is out of more than 20 training providers operating across the geography. Remember the difficulty of the territory that we deliver training in. Their trainers are subject matter experts on specific Red Hat products, but more than that, they are subject matter experts in domains of knowledge. So they are operating system uh, experts, security experts, networking experts that they have as trainers. The one caveat, and we're working on improving this, is they don't have any uh, middleware trainers at this point in time that are previous developers with a deep development knowledge. That's an area we're looking to fix, and we're make, looking to make a big investment in that area. Okay. Certified instructors and then a team of dedicated account managers. Why the account managers are important is training is normally a budget issue, right? So we don't care about that at this level. We, we, you know, we just want training. We want to get it done. We want to get the value from training. But training is normally budgeted by management and budgeted by finance. The account managers at Talk IT can help you access the right people within your organization to unlock that budget. So they've got all the information needed and all the context generally within your business needed to help you get that training approved that you've been trying to do for so long and you've been frustrated. The training that they deliver on behalf of Red Hat is across the entire product range. So everything from uh, RHCSA, Reddit Certified Sysadmin around RHEL and the operating system, through to software-defined storage like Ceph and Gluster, through to some of our DevOps tools, uh, Cloud Forms, Ansible is an example, Cloud, Virtualization, Rev, and then through to middleware, where we have a full portfolio of products, you know, BPM, Fuse, which is an integration product, uh, 3Scale, which is voted one of the world's best API management platforms and tools. So they're training across the entire broad spectrum of Red Hat products and training. More than 90 courses are accessible. Some of them are classroom based. All right, so 
as I move, shift away from Talk IT and start to wrap up, one of the very important things that you, if you've been doing training through Talk IT over the last year or so, would have realized I have, can you hear me again? We now have a Red Hat kiosk, exam kiosk available, both in Johannesburg and Cape Town. So this is big news, right? In the past, if you needed to do Red Hat certification, you needed to do a classroom-based exam with an instructor next to you, and you had to wait for enough students for that exam to run. What a kiosk does is it gives you the ability to write an exam online, connected through to Red Hat Global, time. Am I going? Can you guys hear me? All right. I think the batteries might be dying. Getting a nod from the back there. All my time's up and they're busy <laughs> throttling my voice. All right. So, so this is big news, right? The kiosk is available. You can uh, go online to Talk's website. There's a redirect that allows you to book an exam. In the past, a limited number of exams were available in South Africa. You can now access any Red Hat exam by booking via the kiosk and you write online and you get your results depending on the exam, you either get your results immediately or in a couple of days. Uh, RHCE would take a couple of days for them to mark your labs, see how you handled the challenges and the questions and then you'll get your results. This is a game changer for Cape Town. Cape Town have historically always felt uh, neglected. This has changed the way that our customers in Stellenbosch and Cape Town consume Red Hat training and certification, so very, very important. The numbers don't lie. Uh, these are the number of students that have done a form of Red Hat training in the last year. So 2016, 652 through Talk IT. 2017, 824 students. And at the, this point, halfway point, almost 600 students have gone through Red Hat training at Talk IT. But that's not necessarily translating into certifications because the exams are really, really hard. So not a slide, but a tip I want to give you guys if you're considering writing the exams is to do either the prep exam through Talk IT, which is a scheduled workshop that they do with you. They'll prep with you. They'll help you get ready for the exam. And this is great advice, right? I spoke to an RHCA from one of our partners, LSD, who uh, used to be a trainer. And he's a Red Hat certified architect. And he said the best thing you can do is sit with the, in, the instructors, the trainers, because they have the, question, they have the information at their fingertips. They know what you're going to get asked. And they can guide you in terms of your prep. Another hack or a little trick that you can do is in LinkedIn, any of you on LinkedIn, top right-hand corner is a training button, right? If you click on that, it takes you to lynda.com, where there are uh, prep exams that you can consume and use to learn to prep for your RHCSA, RHCE, your RHCA exam. You can consume that for the first 30 days at no cost. So if you're a quick learner, LinkedIn, right hand, lynda.com, and start to consume some of this information, it's really going to help you pass. It really, really is. And now I'm going to finish on my favorite topic. I've been talking a lot about skill, building skill, helping you get ready for skill. And a lot of that does come at a cost, right? And open source cost is not always something that, that uh, resonates well with us, right? Sometimes we want something that's free. So I'm going to introduce you to a concept called Red Hat Academy. Who's heard of Red Hat Academy? The Red Hat Academy, and we haven't yet got this off the ground, so I'm asking this to you more as a question than as information. The Red Hat Academy is a program where we enable academic institutions, universities, or organizations that issue certificates and accredited uh, diplomas to deliver training as a Red Hat Academy at no cost. So what do I mean by this? Let's say you're a university or a FTE college, and you are a degree or diploma issuing institute, we will give you, as Red Hat, the program to roll out Red Hat training, to roll out RHCSA, RHCE training, OpenStack training, plus some more. We will give you 
programs to train your instructor, so instructor enablement. We will give you the resources to deliver the training, all the content that a training provider has. We will give that to you. We will help you architect that course into your degree or into your diploma or into whatever it is that you're wishing. So let's say you're doing a BSc computer science degree and in year one you want them to do RHCSA. We will help you retrofit that into the program. We will give you the tools, the resources to enable you to deliver that. All you need to do as a degree or uh, FTE college is build the labs for the students to work on to do the work. All right? We even have an option where you can consume that out the cloud, if you so choose. So this is a game changer, right? This is Red Hat training available to anyone through an academic institution who signed up to the academy at no cost, free. These are the courses that we're offering to universities and academic institutions that are interested in having this conversation. RHCSA, so Red Hat Sysadmin 1, 2, and 3, which will get you to an RHCE, Red Hat Certified Engineer level. Some of the cloud computing, so OpenStack Admin, Introduction to Containers, Kubernetes, and OpenShift. This is the same one that is available on uh, the edX platform if you want to consume it. And then some of our middleware, so programming in Java and then microservices architecture. We can also deliver this, and I say this with a caveat because I would need to get the business's approval to do this. We can also deliver this in partnership with a company that has doing this as a non-profit organization. So if you are building up skills in the community and you are wanting to introduce Red Hat skill, Linux skill, open source skill, and you're wanting to use this program, we can partner with you if you're a university or academic institution or a non-profit focused on this. I want to get this program off the ground because skill is biggest thing we can do to change people's lives. This is something that we did a year ago with one of our partners, Obsidian. We went to the rural communities and took 20 young graduates who had good marks in maths and science and put them through a screening program to look for the right attitude, because attitude is key to someone going through a program and qualifying. We put them through a 12-month program funded by ourselves and Obsidian, delivered by the Obsidian team, using parts of the Red Hat Academy, not in its full form because it's a new program, but using parts of the Red Hat Academy to get access to the material and the content. And at the end of a 12-month period, 15 of the 20 students graduated with a CTU certified diploma. Of 15 of those, seven of them graduated with RH CSA. Of those seven, three of them graduated with RH CE. All of them were employed. Some of them are now customers at some of the biggest banks. And this is 18 months ago. So you can change people's lives. We've seen it. We want to do it again. If you're keen on engaging in a Red Hat Academy or you know someone who is, who wants to help us build the program that we can take out to the whole of Africa, please come and talk to me after. Thank you. Any questions? And make them non-technical, easy questions. But seriously, are there any questions? All right. So either it was really crisp and clear, or it was as clear as mud. Yeah? Okay, guys, so I've got one question. Why would you make it easy for you? <laughs> of course. And I believe Microsoft are handing out some, uh, some goodies. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I need a couple of hands up in there. Sorry. No, if you can't catch, you don't get to keep it. So. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, sorry, I don't have those around. I don't think Red Hat shipped any of those uh, for the day. All right. Yeah, there's some caps at the LSD stand. OK, 
Okay, so for those caps. that don't know, LSD stand right at the back yeah. behind Baobab, uh, far corner. And um, if you want fedoras, we, we don't have any here because we had Red Hat Forum a couple of weeks ago and we handed out a large number of backpacks and, and fedoras. But we are ordering a new batch. So if you want to just give your business card to me, uh, we'll invite you to our next tech session that we have in a couple of weeks' time. If you arrive, we'll get you a fedora. And we're also doing... Um, I forget the name. It's not Ansible Fest, Ansible Automate. We're doing an Ansible Automate event in November. So if you want to come to that, it really is one of the most exciting technologies that we're seeing at the moment. Adoption everywhere, and some customers are really considering Ansible for Ansible for networking or Ansible Tower for the enterprise support. So if you want to come to Automate, come and get some information and we'll invite you. Thank you.